Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you are all doing wonderful and Shahe Rajab Mubarak to all of you. I really hope you have been enjoying these series called A Voice Within and today I'll be joining you again as per every month I will be joining you inshallah to have a discussion with our life coach Sister Naseem Waljibir Muhammad. Sister Naseem, Assalamualaikum. How are you doing? Assalamu alaikum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear Sana, hope you're doing well this evening. It's Wednesday evening and congratulations to you and to all our viewers who are keeping in touch with A Voice Within program. A very reflective. Month, right so that is something that we need to really uh, take into consideration and also if you look at the 12 months um, our audience must uh, be aware of this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are four imminent profound months within the 12 months and if you look at the four months that are holy and blessed one of them is Rajab and then we have the three that are Dhul Qadha, Dhul Hijjah, and then we have Muharram, right? But if you look at Dhul Qadha, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram, they all come like, you know, in sync. They are aligned with each other. Whereas you find that Raja, the Holy Prophet وسلم, that he was um, given the Risala, he was given the prophethood on the 27th night heart and trying to revive them restoring our spiritual hearts and that is why you find that the mauludul kaaba is in this blessed month of rajab whereby you find that there are amazing supplications 
it is highly highly recommended to fast and i'm sure i wanted to pose a question to you and maybe you could answer me sana and this is something that i usually ask a lot of sisters and i'm sure my viewers will be engaged with me that when you look at the month of rajab when you perceive rajab what comes into your mind what how do you picture rajab what kind of thoughts go through your mind Honestly, I see a lot of light and I think that's just um also memories of 13 Rajab growing up. Every year we used to have that jashan and that's just something that is just it's just at the peak. Like it's sort of like the middle of the month, so it's just beautiful thing to look forward to. That's what I perceive it as, but I know that this is such a glorious month and perhaps you could tell me what what responses you get from others. Yes, so most of the people will say, "Oh my God, we're missing the sufro, the kheer puri oh, yeah. sufro in the month of Rajab." And if you remember that we used to attend so many sufro, yeah. right? The the kunda and the Imam Jafar Sadi Kalay Salam sufro, uh, Imam Al uh, Musel Kanim Day. You know, we have a sufro, right? So we all go to the mosque and we have the duas, the recitations. Everybody in congregation. everybody is so dressed up because it's a sufro right and i think this year i feel as a practical tip and i'm sure sister sana you like agree with me that despite us not being able to visit the mosque and and do things together it's it's nice to arrange that sufro at home and share it with our neighbors and also you know we can we can do this um, by making some really nice uh, uh, you know food uh, you know baskets um with fruits uh, with kheer with puri you know anything that's healthy any snacks that you want to cook and just bless it and 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 the fasting this month it's it is said that uh, according to one of the narrations of the holy prophet when one of the companions abdullah ibn abbas when he came and visited the holy prophet and asked what is the best thing that we can do in the month of rajab what is what is it so you know oh inspiring in this month of rajab and the holy prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he mentioned that one of the greatest actions that we can perform in this blessed month of rajab is to fast if we cannot fast the whole month right because i'm sure you will agree with me a lot of our sisters and brothers last year we were in a lot of panic if you remember if you recall the first time we heard about covid i mean people were panic buying if you remember people used to go and 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 look out for the you know toilet tissue rolls and so many things that we used to do but if you look at 2021 i think allah subhanahu wa taala has really prepared us emotionally mentally psychologically that you know you need to be very very hopeful and hence you find that a mu'min is between the pendulum of hope and fear that i need to be hopeful this whole concept of hope is extremely important so i think sana the things that i would want to do is maybe make the sufro have the kheer puri enjoy with family share it with our neighbors help us you know give um sadaqa you know as much as we can in this month and look out for the people who are struggling who are suffering and also this month is for istighfar so i'm sure we'll we'll, we'll get into that in a moment inshallah about the concept of istighfar Yes for sure. Thank you so much Sister Nasim. You beautifully talked about why it is that Rajab is such a glorious month. You've given us a few practical tips on how to still um feel the energy of Rajab even though we are at home in lockdown. Um I want to sort of dive deeper into this energy of Rajab and feeling Rajab. So how can we use this month to prepare us for the following months of shaban ramadan and how can we connect on a spiritual but more um more so like our energies our hearts how can we connect it to the month itself okay so i think i think we need to we need to agree on one thing i think my sisters my viewers out there we need to agree that rajab is the month of decluttering 
our souls. So basically, um, getting rid of all the past mistakes, trying to scaffold our souls through a lot of istighfar, through sincere penitence, through toba, and the whole idea about con the concept of toba is so profound in the Holy Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about toba in so many chapters of the Holy Quran. I think initially. Rajab is like spring cleaning. What do we do at home when we, uh, wives, women, daughters, children, when we all get together and say, right, next week we're going to be spring cleaning the house, right? And I'm going to stop there. What does it mean? Ya Allah, I am the one who is returning back to you. What does it mean? It means every good deed, Allah, it is through you. But all the mistakes, the sins, the darknesses of my heart, the darknesses of my soul are because of my own doing, right? Because of my heedlessness. It's me being lazy. He would do his nafila prayers and then just sit on the sajda uh, in the musalla and do istighfar, istighfar. So one of his wives, she was, I've lost my path. What do I do? I'm in that panic mode. But then instantly you find this little bit of solace within you. You gain the confidence and you make a detour and re rerouting your whole um, journey. So right
the month of Ramadan, what happens to us, my dear sister? What happens? I'm already part of this spiritual boot camp, right? I mean, you will not even go through those moments. Oh my God, such long fast. Oh my God, I will not be able to do it. It's difficult. We are at home. I have to cook the iftar and I have to be with my kids at home. I miss the mosque. Of course, we all miss the mosque. We all miss the, you know, the beautiful time that we spend in, in the month of Ramadan, the connection with our sisters and friends. And you know, that humanness and the human connection. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just wants to prepare us for the dhuhr of the 12th holy imam. That all these different dimensions that we are going through. Perhaps I don't have the answer. I'm sure even the scientists don't have the answer. I'm sure everybody is in quest of asking this question. That when will life be normal? When will we be able to see our friends? When will we be able to go for our holidays? When will I go for ziyara? When will I go for hajj? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you have to be patient and just carry on the beautiful journey of your spirituality. That was so beautiful. And I think um, a takeaway that I have definitely taken away from, um, learned from here is that I feel us humans, we're scared of being vulnerable, which is what you were mentioning, that we're scared. Sure. Like you kind of mentioned that um, in the state of a husband and wife, they're scared of losing each other. And that generally comes after you've lost that vulnerability, right? That you've, you've completely like lost yourself in that aspect. Now, one thing I noticed is that um, we often try to go about our daily lives. We try to read these books, we try to do these wajibat or these amal, but sometimes we don't, we're not at that state of vulnerability because we haven't necessarily connected to God to ask for forgiveness first. So we're doing all of these deeds, we're building it up, and then Ramadan comes and we're like, okay, well, why is this so hard, right? So even if we do these deeds, um, in Rajab and Shaban, if we're not asking for forgiveness, if we're not seeking those um, those times alone where we just weep out and everything to God that maybe this this displeased um, displeased you, maybe I was bad at this time, right? If we don't feel that, then we're not we're not breaking those barriers before we're entering light in, right? So I really like that you said that. If you want to add any concluding words to tonight's program about this month of Rajab or about this divine healing through the month of Rajab that would be amazing right you know something I, I just love you know making some beautiful words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah also makes this very personal between me and my Rob he does not even 